Good day, everyone. Welcome to the second lesson of our module. In the previous discussion, we now understand or we have experienced how to determine the probability of an event, especially in, in, in the definition that the probability of the event is equal to the number of outcomes for that event divided by the number of all possible outcomes which is also the number of possible outcomes in the sample space. So that's the lower case n divided by the, low, the upper case n. Today we will be discussing one of the rules in probability, specifically the additive rules of uh, probability. Now, in the, uh, in the additive rules of probability, we will uh, calculate uh, the probability of the union of the events. If you have two or more events, we can get the probability of those events, you know, the combined probability of the events by getting the probability of their union. And we have uh, several uh, definitions for those or theorems for those. This is the first one, that the probability of two events, the union of two events, the probability of the union of two events, rather, is equal to the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event subtracted by the probability of the intersection of those events. Okay, And we know that the probability of the sample space is uh, equal to 1. If A, the next definition or theorem we have, if, if A and B are two event, events and they are mutually exclusive, when we say mutually exclusive, they don't have an intersection. Okay, so mutually exclusive events uh, are events which don't have intersections. So their probability is just equal to the sum of those probabilities. So if we will show them in a Venn diagram, so you have A and B. So they don't have common outcomes or common values. Now, if more than one or more than two events are mutually exclusive, then their probability is just equal to the sum of each of the probabilities. And if the if more than two events are partition of sample space, then if we sum all of all of uh, the probabilities of the events, that will be just equal to the probability of the sample space. We also have this definition for three events. As you can see here, their probability or the probability of their union is just equal to the sum of each of the probabilities of the events minus the um, the inter the probability of the intersections of each of uh, each of the pairs plus the probability of the intersection of the three. So, if, see for example, uh, I have here three events. Okay. Sorry for the, so we have A, B, and C, and this will be our sample space. Okay, the first thing to do is to get the probability of each. Okay. The probability of each event will be these inside these circles. Okay, this is P of A, P of B, and P of C, subtracted by the intersections, the probability of the intersection of each pair. So these are, you have the intersection of A and B, this one. We can say this is the intersection of A and B. This is the intersection of B and C here, and the intersection of A and C. Now, another thing is those intersections have another intersection, so which means we will add uh, this one, this 
Oh, está bien. Okay, this means we will add uh, this intersection here. This is the intersection of the three events, the A, B, and C. Okay, let's take this example. We have John is, a grad, uh, is going to graduate from a civil engineering department in a university by the end of the semester. By the way, these problems were taken from our reference uh, from our book, you know, from the, uh, which is actually uh, from the book, which is actually presented or shown in the module summary. So you can find if you have a copy of that book, so you can find the different problems there. Okay, going back, John is going to graduate from a civil engineering department in a university by the end of the semester. After being interviewed at two companies, he likes the two companies he likes. He assesses that his probability of getting an offer from company A is 0 0.8, and his probability of getting an offer from company B is 0 0.6. If he believes that the probability he will get offers from both companies a and B is 0 0.5, then what will be the probability that he will get at least one offer from these two companies? So I am now highlighting the events that uh, we might need. Okay, we have here company A, so we'll denote uh, P of A or probability of A. Now for company A is 0 0.8. Now the probability that Company B will uh, provide an offer to John is 0 0.6. Okay, then, which means uh, we have here, he, belie he believes that the probability will get offers from both, meaning from both A and B. Then we can assume that uh, <clears throat> the probability of the intersection of a and B, okay? The probability of the intersection of A and B is equal to 0 0.5. If you're going to show this in a Venn diagram, so the problem might look like this. You have a sample space, event A, 0 0.8, then event B, mm, that's um, 0 0.6, so probably uh, the size. Sorry about that. Okay, anyways, this is A and this is B. A has 0 0.8 probability to give offer. B has 0 0.6 probability to uh, give an offer. And uh, the area in between is 0 0.5. And this is the intersection of A and B. So these are the given values in our problem. Therefore, what is asked is the probability that he will get an offer from both companies, which means the union of the two. Now, we cannot directly add 0 0.8 and 0 0.6. That would exceed 1. Now, we know that the probability, you have to take note that the probability of the sample space is just equal to or is equal to 1. So therefore, following the given theorems, since there are only two uh, events given, so that would be, oh, okay, there's no solution shown. So I would just, I would be just showing the solution. So that would be the probability of the union of A and B based on the given theorem is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of the intersection of A and B. And that's 0 0.8 plus 0 0.6 minus 0 0.5. 0 0.8 plus 0 0.6 is 1.4 minus 0 0.5, that's 0 0.9.
So I will, I can, we, th therefore we can say, or Jan can say that there is 90% probability that uh, companies B, either uh, companies B and A will offer, no, will, will give an offer. So that's 0 0.9 or 0 0.90. So again, this is how we, we solve for the, for problems using the additive rules. Let's take another example. So what is the probability of getting a total of seven or 11 when a pair of fair dice is tossed? Now take note of this term fair dice commonly. Uh, this will be, this will be um, presented or given in the problem just to denote that each of the numbers in the die in a die has equal probabilities or equal chances of occurring. Now, here in the problem, there are two dice, no? since we have a pair of pair dice. And we know that for each die, we have six possible outcomes. That's one, two, three. No, we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, there are six possible outcomes. However, it, since we have two dice, and based on our previous discussion in counting sample points, now we have uh, how many possible outcomes can we get from tossing a pair of dice? That is actually six times six, and that's 36. So therefore, for these, um, for this problem, there are 36 possible outcomes. Okay, and that is the uh, our the number of. Okay, for a while. The 36 possible outcomes is the number of outcomes in our sample space. Okay, that's 36. So the probability of our s, which is equal to uh, if we will get the probability, so that should be equal to one. So that is uh, based on our theorem, right? If you recall our theorems. Now, since there are 36 possible outcomes, if we will use a tree diagram, so please just let me use a tree diagram for a presentation purposes. Now, each one, after the, uh, the first die can have uh, six possible outcomes, and the second die can also have another six possible outcomes, which is a one can be can have a pair of one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now same with here, one, two, three, four, five, and six until six. We have six, one, six, two, six, three, six, four, six, five, six, six. Now here in the problem, we are only concerned with uh, the outcomes, which has a total of seven and a total or a total of 11. So if we will denote uh, A to be the event wherein the outcomes is a pair wherein the total is equal to seven. Now, what, what pairs you know, which has an outcome, a total of seven? So if you will take a look at this tree diagram, we have one and six no the re result is seven for two we can have two and four uh two and five rather right no, because uh that's seven uh for three we can have three and four and three plus six is, is nine so we don't have then for four we have uh three so the result would be seven for five, we can have two. So result is seven. And for six, we have one. So the possible pairs that we can get are one, six, two, five, three, four. We also have four, three. And five two, and also six one. 
Okay. Now, what, what is the probability of getting an A? If you are asked, what is the probability of getting an A? So we know here that this is a, 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 a fair, no, a pair, fair, pair of fair dice, okay? So we have each of which here, uh, in the first uh, die, each has one over six weight, no? Each of these has one over six probability that the number will occur. Same with the second, uh, in the second die. We have also one six. So therefore, that's one six times one six. Each of the combinations here, the possible outcomes for tossing a pair of fair dice has one over 36 weight or probability. Now, if we count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So adding all of them, we have one over 36. We can just have multiply it by six or simply adding them one by one. Okay, that's one plus 36, one, of, uh, one over 36 rather, plus one over 36, plus one over 36, plus one over 36. And adding them up since they have the same numerators, so the result will be six over 36. Okay, now that's the probability of getting 7. We are also asked of the probability of getting 11. Now, what are the combinations where in the total, when we add the outcomes of the two dice, the, result, the total value is 11. Now, for 3 plus 6, that's 9. So, it's not, we don't have 11. 4 plus 6 is 10, so which means the 11 uh, can be found here. We'll have... Uh, for 11, we have 5 plus 6, right? And 6 plus 5. So we'll have an 11. So there are only two uh, possible combinations whose result is equal to 11. And these are again 5, 6, and 6, 5. Take note that I am using parentheses, so meaning there, these are ordered, ordered pairs. No ordered pairs meaning they cannot be interchanged okay so if 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 you write six here then five here that's a different uh, pair so which means uh, since we know that each outcomes has a weight of one over 36 and we only have two possible outcomes that means the probability of getting uh, these two is uh, two over 36. Going back to our definition, we have the probability of the union of two events is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B plus the probability of the intersection of the two events. Now, the question here is, do A and B have common values so do they have intersection if you would take a look at the combinations no or or the ordered pairs they don't have they don't share the same values or shapes they don't share the same ordered pairs which means this is zero and this would just um, tell us that events a and b are actually mutually exclusive meaning they don't share the same elements okay they don't share the same outcomes. So the intersection is zero. So what remains are the probabilities of A and B. And that's 6 over 36 plus 2 over 36. As you can see, I did not simplify the fraction yet. That is because I know that I will be adding these two. So that when I add these two, I don't have problems in the denominator. Now, if we recall, we can only add factor, uh, fractions rather. We can only add fractions which have the same denominators. So I didn't change the denominator so that I can easily add them. And this would result to 
8 over 36. And this will be the time that we can simplify them, getting the common factors of 8 and 36. So what are the factors of 8 that can be divided by, that can also be divided to uh, 36? And we have uh, 8 is 8 times 2. Uh, 36 can be divided, uh, 8 rather is 4 times 2. And 36 can be divided by 4. So we'll have uh, 8 divided by 4 is 2. 36 divided by 4 is 9. So the probability of uh, getting either 7 or 11, uh, no, uh, getting a pair whose total is 7 or 11 is 2 over 9. Or if we round this or if we get the exact value of this one, we'll get 0, sorry, 0. 0.2, 2, and 2. So this will be our final answer. So this is how uh, we use the additive uh, rules in, in probability. Okay. Let's take the other examples. Okay, let's have problem number eight. If the probabilities are respectively 0 0.9, 0 0.15, Okay, 0 0.9 again, 0 0.15, 0 0.21, and 0 0.23, that a person purchasing a new automobile will choose a color green, white, red, or blue. So we have here, so based on the given, we have green, white, red, or blue. So we have, we have to write here to the probability, let's use G to denote event uh, the selected automobile is green and it has a probability of 0 0.9. Uh, for selecting white, we have a 0 0.15 probability. For selecting red, there's uh, 0.21 or 0 0.21 probability. And selecting a blue car or automobile, automobile is 0 0.23. If we sum them up, uh, the result is not actually equal to um, <clears throat> one. Now, this would mean that uh, the the customer, my the person, might uh, there is a probability that the person would not buy or would select other colors. So if uh, if we'll get the total of these probabilities, you know, we'll have, I think this is 8, 10, 8, so carry 1, we have 68. So the total probability of the union of these sets or, or of these events, okay, so I think that's problem A. Okay, we'll just show the solution here. So what's the probability that a given buyer pool purchase a new automobile that comes in one of those colors. So we'll get the probability of uh, these, uh, that the buyer or the person will select any, so any of, of these colors, no? Car, uh, automobile colors. So that's the probability of getting green with the probability of getting white, red, and blue. So we'll just add all of them to so the 0 0.09 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.21 plus 0 0.23. So again, since we had already summed it up earlier, so the result is 0 0.68. Therefore, the probability of getting any of uh, the probability that a buyer or a person will get any of these colors, green, white, red, and blue, is 0 0.68. Now, we have another problem here. Another question is, what is the probability that the given buyer will purchase a new automobile that is not green? Okay, now, uh, <clears throat> there is 
uh, this one is related to uh, this one will be related to the next topic so, uh, to the next discussion that's actually in the complement but, but we will just show the solution here so you, you will not choose green now since this is the statement and it is not stated that uh, he will buy any of these colors but not green so it might be a different case but since the statement is written in this way or yeah expressed in this way so which means that we will consider the probability we're in there uh, the the buyer or the person will not uh, buy okay so as you can see here though we have 0.68 okay if you remember that the probability of the sample space is equal to one therefore if we will use a uh, if you will just denote O, okay, to be the probability of that the, it's either the probability that you will not buy, uh, you will not buy any of these colors, so that would be 1 minus 0 0.68, that is 0 0.32, right? So that's 1 minus, uh, but if you recall that the probability of all the mutually exclusive events until A to N, yeah, if, if you recall the previous theorems, so A to N is just equal to the probability of the sample space, and that is equal to 1. So you, that means the probability of getting green, white, red, blue, and others is equal to 1. So since we have 0 0.68 for the, the sum of the probabilities of this, these four colors, then the remaining will be 0 0.32. Here is the problem. It, uh, second problem, it says that the um, the automobile that the buyer will not buy a green one <clears throat> so since the probability of a green of selecting green is 0 0.9 a uh, 0 0.9 which means the probability that he will not buy a green so let's say we will denote not no as a complement is actually equal to just 1 minus the probability of getting or buying green and that is 1 minus 0 0.09 and that is equal to 0 0.91 so that's the probability that you will not choose green again i say i've told you earlier that uh the statement you no know, it depends on the statement now what if what if let's have a c now a problem c what if the statement would just say that what is the probability that um, the buyer will not buy a green automobile but any of the remaining three meaning what is the probability that uh, the buyer will not buy will not buy green but it can be white red or blue no we will buy any of the colors green white uh, white red blue but not green so we can have then we can have just 0 0.68 minus 0. Point, no that, that will be just we can just say no, that's 0 0.68 minus 0 0.09 which is equal to um that's 59 okay that's zero that's 0 0.59 59 or we can just add the probabilities of these three green white and red so that's zero uh, no, rather, not not we do not include green but other colors that's white red and blue so 0 0.15 plus 0 0.21 plus 0 0.23 is 0 0.59
Okay, now you have to take note or be careful with how the statements were uh, being written. So again, I have told you that the B here is actually um, presented in the next slide. And this is about complementary events. Uh, we have, if you have an event, of course, we have in a set, in the universal set, say, for example, you have set A or event A. Now, those outcomes which are not part of A are the complement of A. So, this one here are actually the complement of A. And if we add the probabilities of the two, the result is one. So, this is just the same with the probability of our sample space. So, the probability of the event added by its the probability of its complement is just equal to the probability of the sample space, which is equal to 1. Here are some additional uh, problems. We have if the probabilities of an automobile mechanic will service 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 or more cars on any given workday are respectively 0 0.12. So we'll have here Probability of getting three. Is zero point twelve. The probability of getting four is zero point nineteen. The probability of getting five is zero point twenty eight. The probability of getting 6 is 0 0.24. The probability of getting 7 is 0 0.10. The probability of getting 8 or more, which means greater than 7, is 0 0.24. Zero seven. Now let's try to sum them up. So the probability of all of these, we have 0 0.12, 0 0.19 is 31 plus 0.28. That's um, that's 0.12. Okay, 31 plus uh, 59 plus this is zero. Uh, say, okay, 11, 19, uh, 23, and 30. So this is 0, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 0, so carry 1, 1.0. Therefore, in this problem, so this is now the uh, union of all of these, so I'll just use S no, since it has a probability which is equal to one, so I uh, denote S. So therefore, in this problem, uh, yeah, the mechanic will always have to service three or more automobiles. Now, meaning every day, every work day, the mechanic will have cars to be serviced. So that's the uh, probability for sample space. Now, the question here is. What is the probability that he will service at least five cars on his next day at work? So you have here at least, when we say at least, meaning the minimum number of cars that he will service is five. So that's probably these, right? You have, uh, there are many possible ways that we can solve for this. So if, if, if we get the probability of getting at least 5 greater than or equal to 5, we can just say 1 minus uh, the probability of getting 3 and 4, right? Since uh, these two are not included. So that's 1 plus... 0.12 plus 0.19. And this is equal to 
zero point sixty nine. So point nineteen plus point twelve is point thirty one. So that's the probability of getting at least five cars. We can also just add. So this is the rule of complement, or we can also just add the. We can just add this three. So the result would be still zero point sixty nine. Okay, so that's how we use um, the complement, you know, the, the rules. This will be our last uh, example for this um, session. So we have supposed of a manufacturer specification for the length of a certain type of computer are 2000 plus and minus 10 mm. Uh, this one here is called tolerance, meaning the common outputs, okay, the common specifications or lengths of a certain computer cable can range from 2,000 plus 10, ah, that's 2,000 minus 10 mm until 2,000 plus 10 mm. So it ranges from 1,990 until 2,010 mm. So this is the specification now, meaning the standard cable will have these uh, measurements. So it's from within 1,990 to 2,010. Now in, in this industry, it is known that small cable is just likely to be defective, not meeting specification as large cable. So this means that uh, the probability of getting defective, a small, getting a smaller cable compared to the specification has the same probability of getting a large cable, larger cable compared to this specification. So that is the probability of randomly producing a cable with length exceeding 2,010 millimeters is equal to the probability of producing cable with length smaller than 1,990. Now, if the probability that the production procedure meets within the specification is known to be 1, a 0 0.99. So let's just have, let's use letters to represent the events. Now, let's say that if getting standard value or standard measurement, the probability is 0 0.99. So which means uh, then we will use probably B. We will use B uh, to denote uh, for less than 1,990 mm. Okay. And we will use the probability of C when producing greater than the maximum, which is 0. Uh, 2010 millimeters. Again, remember these. So let's answer the first uh, problem. <clears throat> so we know that again, the probability of getting A is 0 0.99. Okay, then what is the probability that the selected cable is randomly too large? Now we have there probability of B is for the smaller one, right? And the probability of C is for the larger one. So that's greater than 2010. But we don't know these probabilities. So therefore, we have to get first, what is the probability of getting both? We know this. So this is just equal to the probability of A. Okay? And the probability of A is just equal to 1 minus uh, a, the complement of A rather, that's just 1 minus the probability of A. And that is 1 minus 0 0.99. Then we'll get 0 0.01. <clears throat> okay, so that's the probability of getting either B or C. Now, getting a cable 
cable length with exceeds um, which which is not within this specification. Now, since we know that the probability of, based on the problem, the probability of B is just equal to the probability of C, then we can just divide this probability. So that's equal to 0 0.01 divided by 2. And that's 0 0.00. Zero, five. So therefore, the probability of getting a cable which is which is larger or longer than two thousand ten millimeters is zero point zero zero five, or um, that's point five percent. Okay, and then we have here problem B. So what is the probability that a randomly selected cable is larger than 1,919 m. We know that the probability of getting 1,900 less than 1,900 millimeters is 0 0.005, right? So it says that greater than or larger than, so which means we will get. Uh, this includes 1,990. So on now, 2010 millimeters and larger um, lens. So therefore, this would uh, tell us that the one that we are looking for is actually the complement of B, and that's just one minus uh, the probability of <clears throat> B. We know that the probability of B is one a uh, 0 0.005. So that is one minus. So the probability of getting cables which has longer than 1,990 millimeters is 0 0.995 or 99.5%. So that's how we use the different additive rules. Now, for your engage, I have here a problem according to a consumer digest in July and August 1996, the probable location of personal computers in the home is as follows. A, com a personal computer has 0 0.3 probability that it's in the adult bedroom, 0 0.15 in the child bedroom, 0 0.14 in other bedrooms, probably in the guest bedroom or others, 0 0.14 in, a, in an office, office or a den, no, it's a separate separate room, a 0 0.28 probability that that it's in other rooms, okay? Probably in the dining room or in the living room and other rooms, okay? So that's the probability. Now you have there three questions with the answer. You'll just have to provide the explanation or solution of these answers, okay? What is the probability that a personal computer is in a big bedroom? So that's 0 0.32, not in the bedroom, 0 0.68. And when you go to the house, well, which do you think uh, will a personal computer is located? So the answer is office or den. So again, you provide the solution to this one. Uh, letter C might, uh, you might be, you might use sentences to <clears throat> prove, no, or to explain your answer. Okay, so this would be all for this session. Now, thank you for watching and see you in, okay, see you in, uh, sorry, see you in the next discussion.